Hello everyone, welcome back to our segment routing traffic engineering series. Hope you guys are staying safe with these challenging time and uh, I kind of apologize not up, you know uploading new content. I have been pretty busy as I kind of indicated in past with a couple of my ongoing projects uh, where I was working on a couple of the segment routing implementation and uh, few other technologies so my project just got over other day so i thought of you know creating or continuing our series uh, so far in this series if i have to give you a quick recap we talked about segment routing we talked about how would you go ahead and configure different type of sr policies and on the same context today we're going to talk about a brand new concept or idea which is simply called as odn and if you take a look at ODN, really stands for on demand next hop. So, so far, when we were creating any kind of SR policy, either we had created an explicit policy, that means where you will go ahead and configure either your IPv4 address or your MPLS labels for your next hop. We have also learned how would you go ahead and create dynamic policy, either local policy, that means computed locally by your PCC. We also learned how would you go ahead and make use of PCE, which is your central component. Now, all of those approaches uh, stands pretty good. Uh, there's nothing wrong. Yeah, you can go ahead and create any kind of policy and certainly go ahead and make use of some of those. things. But now, when you are working with like large implementation, there are always challenge. And one of the questions that is simply being asked, let's say you, there are two sites. And between those two sides, you are trying to create a VPN and you want your VPN to make use of a segment routing policy to forward your traffic. Now, what you go ahead and do that, you will say, hey, Arun, you know, if this is one VPN, we can probably go ahead and create one SR policy. Yeah, your answer is absolutely right. How about if we have two such VPNs? We can certainly go ahead and create two. But as the number of your endpoint starts to grow, now the question comes in, do I have to configure a policy for every such source and destination peer in a VPN? Think about it. It could become a simply a nightmare because, okay, hey, as long as you had limited number, when I say limited number, 2, 5, 10, okay, makes sense. You can probably go ahead and start configuring all those policies manually. But as your number of VPN customers starts to grow, you might find this approach to be pretty cumbersome because you don't want to be spending time creating these policies manually so how would we go ahead and deal with some of these things where you have literally so many endpoints to deal with and at the same time right now let's say you have a customer coming up let imagine you are offering some kind of trial services where you are giving your services to try let's say for seven days or a week or 15 days now, you do not want to be creating those policies every 7 days or 15 days and then trying to take them down and again when the new customer comes and you are trying to provision again. So, you are looking for some way to automatically have these policies comes up and that's where we can go ahead and make use of this concept of on-demand next hop, ODN. So, like as it clearly says, hey, it's an on-demand, really that's the key here we need to look. It is based on on-demand. That means you will go ahead and create so far what we have done we have created a policy in that policy sorry or in that srt policy we had configured a your head end which is your source simply and your tail end or the destination which is your end point and we had used some color value to signify that so in the case of odn generally odns are called odn templates we do not generally call them like SRT policy, these are simply like called ODN templates or ODN. That means now you will go ahead and create something called a generic template. And when there are certain conditions are being met against that ODN template, it can go ahead and instantiate a policy for you. So now we are talking about meeting some certain condition. So that's where our BGP will come into the picture. And if you guys have worked with the BGP, you know in the BGP we have a extended community extended attribute basically which we call as simply as color so you can go ahead and make use of some of those things and you can go ahead and based on on demand you can go ahead and start creating sr policy so in this episode we're going to go ahead and quickly take a look at what is odn 
we'll run through some of the theoretical concepts and in the next episode we'll go ahead and do some hands-on around the ODN. So let's go ahead and jump onto one of Cisco's official documentation. And if I go, this is again standard Cisco documentation you can find I'm referencing to one Cisco ASR 9000, you know, based on 6.5. Now, just to quickly talk about the SR policy, we had talked about an SR policy has simply a head end, a color end point. Now, just to continue our conversation, now as the name says here, okay, it is based on on demand. So, that is the whole keyword, guys, that segment routing on demand next stop allow a service head end router, means your head end router, to automatically instantiate an SR policy to a BGP next stop when required. So here the required means on demand. So what are the benefits you get out of the ODN? I gave you one pretty big example. Let's say if you're working with a VPN or service provider and where you are every day provisioning your VPN endpoints, you do not want to be configuring that manually because you may find it soon pretty challenging. So that means what we can go ahead and do, you can go ahead and create SLA aware BGP services with the help of ODN. It is simplicity. So that what is the simplicity really indicates here, hey, no prior SR policy configuration needs to be configured or maintained. See guys, that's the key. That means you are not configuring any policy beforehand. Instead, operator simply configures a small set of common intent based optimization templates throughout the network. Keep in remember, that's why ODN is simply called as sometimes templates, not an S policy. And again, it's a scalable. I just gave you an example of scalability with the VPN. Device resources at the head end router are used only when required. That means you can always go ahead and provision many more services and you might not be using all of those services. So it is pretty simple and scalable at the same time. We will go ahead and see this diagram this flow when we do hands on. So now if I go ahead and simply scroll down. So as I said guys, an on demand SR policy is created dynamically for BGP global or VPN services route. A lot of the time that's what where the ODN is being utilized when you have a BGP and majority of the time when you are working with the VPN either it could be L2 VPN or L3 VPN depending on that. And that's what it says okay hey, the following services are supported with your ODN. What you can do with the ODN you can have IPv4 BGP global routes. You can have similarly IPv6 BGP global routes. You can have VPN v4 routes. You can have VPN v6 routes. Or you can have a eVPN VPWS. Again, that is primarily used with your layer 2. So now, when we are work, going to work with the ODN, we'll need to go ahead and define the SR ODN template. Again, guys, pay the attention. It is SR ODN template on the SRT head and router. So you will go ahead and pick the same thing you have been doing or configuring the services. Now we will go ahead and configure an SR ODN template onto a head and router. Now again, it's up to us. We can have that path computation to be offloaded to an SRPCE or we can go ahead and do that locally. And now we'll go ahead and same way, we will go ahead and specify a few other things here. Now, if you take an example here, how do we go ahead and configure an on-demand template? So now we'll go ahead and pick a router, which is your head-on router. You will do the same thing, segment routing, traffic engineering. Now here you will use a keyword which says on-demand. That means, hey, we are configuring an ODN template. Now, if you remember in a policy, you need to have three things, a head end, a color, and an endpoint. So in this case, we have an head end, which is this particular router, and the name of this router is router. We do have a color, but there is a third thing that we need, which is our endpoint on destination. Now, if you take a look at in this keyword, we do not have an endpoint configured specifically. That is the major difference if you pay attention here because when you configure a specific endpoint, that means we just went ahead and created an SR policy between this head end router to that specific tail end. But in this case, we are not configuring any tail end IP address. We are just leaving it generic. We are saying, okay, hey, you know, I am configuring an on demand where the color needs to be 10. Now, for this on demand, we are adding a keyword like dynamic in this case and for the dynamic i'm saying okay the path computation for this template needs to be done by the psap that is your srpce and these are again different optimization objective that we have learned earlier we want to use the metric type you can pick either igp te latency 
for this example, we are saying hey, the metric type that we are selecting is TE. And there are a few other things that you can go ahead and use it, like there is a metric margin. These are the things that come handy when you have multiple paths and which are not equally of the same type. Now you can also go ahead and configure the constraint we talked about, like in this case, disjoint path. We can configure a group ID based on either link, a node, or an SRLG. Uh, we have learned all of these things. Same way affinity, we can go ahead and make use of the affinity. We can either include something or we can exclude something based on that. We can also go ahead and configure a flex algorithm. I don't think so we have uh, talked about. If not, we'll go ahead and cover, but I think we might have covered that already. And in this case, we are saying the SID algorithm and the maximum depth in this case. And these are some of the other parameters that we can go ahead and configure. So that's how we'll go ahead and configure an ODN template. Now, see the key, major key difference that you need to remember, guys, that when you configure an ODN template, there is no specific end point here. There is only a color. So now we need to match this color somehow between this router and a destination that we want to reach. That means when any specific type of traffic that comes into this router, we can make use of the BGP's extended community attributes and we can try setting some specific thing to route to this particular color. And when there is a match, I'll go ahead and instantiate a policy for us. Again, don't worry. I will go ahead and see all these things when we do the hands-on. I just want to make you sure that you understand the concept of ODN before we really do the hands-on. And again, the ODN is used in many uh, different places. In this, another there is another example that says configuring SR ODN layer three services example. So here is an example. In this case, if you take a look, segment routing traffic engineering, an ODN template is being configured where the color for this ODN template is 10. There is no endpoint. That means it's an on-demand. It is dynamic where the metric is being used as a TE metric. We are configuring another ODN template. That ODN template has a color value of 20 dynamic and the metric in this case is IGP. That's the third one. We are configuring IGP and here we are also using some affinity where we are excluding certain things. In this ODN template, we are, it's a dynamic and the path computation has been offloaded to the PCE. The metric in this case is TE. We are also using making use of the affinity. In this case, there's another template for ODN, which is latency based. Now we have been talking that if you want to match something, you would need to go ahead and make use of BGP extended community. And in this case, we are making use of the BGP color extended community set. So what are we telling in this case? We are saying, okay, hey, I'm making use of an extended community set, opaque and this is the name. And we are just picking the color as 10. So if you see, this was one of the color that we had specified in our ODN template. So that way we went ahead and created multiple extended community set with different color values, 10, 20, 21, 30, and these are their different names. So we just simply went ahead and created the extended community sets. Now we are making use of the RPL. Now in the route policy, we are saying we are assigning a name and we are saying, okay, hey, for this particular route policy, I want you to go ahead and set the extended community color to this number and this number indicates 10. That means if I'll go ahead and make use of this route policy somewhere, for that particular route policy, the color will be set as 10 and we are passing that. Similarly, we are creating different route policy. In this case, we are setting color 20, here we are using 30 and we are making use of a prefix set. So we created simply a prefix set and in this case, we are saying, okay, hey, a route policy this particular route policy, if you see if the destination in sample, if means if this is the destination, that means we are getting something from the router. And if we need to reach this particular destination for this particular destination, I am setting the community color to be 10. That means if I'm importing any route, which has the prefix as 88.1.0 slash 24, for that, I want you to go ahead and set an extended BGP community color to be 10. And if the destination, let's say the prefix is different, just simply pass that. We are not doing anything. So what happened? Let's say there is a router which is advertising this prefix to this particular head and router. There will be a match on this route policy. And when there is a match, BGP will go ahead and import this prefix 
and it will go ahead and append this color value. When this color value is appended, segment routing SR policy ODN is monitoring that size. ODN detects, okay, hey, there is a prefix where for that prefix the color value is 10. Now we do have a template which is on demand. The only thing we were missing in that ODN template was the or your endpoint or your destination. Once BGP imports this particular prefix, now we know, okay, hey, this BGP prefix is coming from router B. So in that case, ODN will kick in and it will go ahead and create a SR policy from this particular router to that router B using this particular color value because that's the color that was matching in that particular case. And similarly, we can go ahead and create few other things here. And that's where the example kind of continues. So that is the whole idea, guys. In this particular case of ODN, the policies will be instantiated on demand when we have something matching and that matching will really happens with the help of BGP extended community. And in that case, we will be making use of the BGP extended community color and we will be coloring our routes and based on the route, the ODN will go ahead and create an SRTE policy. And that will be kind of pretty much all for this particular episode. I just wanted to give you an idea of the ODN. Again, you can read it more uh, detail about the ODN in some of Cisco's official documentation. They have written it pretty nicely. And in the next episode, we will go ahead and do some hands-on around the ODN. We'll go ahead and configure all the community sets and we'll go ahead and import and export. Uh, so that will be primarily all for this episode. I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.